So in this video, we're going to take a look at a supplier intercompany invoice. And what, what this is used for is, let's say you receive a cell phone bill to your corporate entity and you've got multiple financial sites. So, and you need to divvy up the cost amongst the sites. So rather than, you know, split the payment up into individual invoices for all those sites, we can create one invoice and then X3 will handle do all the math on with the intercompany entries to the journal. So we're going to look at our process supplier payments process flow and go to intercompany invoices. I'm going to just walk through an existing one because it's a good example. So I would create a new one if I were going in to create a new document. <clears throat> you see my site is corporate. Um, a lot of times you'll have like a corporate entity set up. Um, so I selected corporate and you can select any one of the sites as but again, in the end, that's where you're going to have to make the payment out of is that site. It'll all come out of the same bank account, so it really doesn't matter. So we select corporate here. It's assigned an invoice, uh, document number, accounting date. You choose the supplier. Supplier invoice date could be differently. Their invoice number. You put in the amount minus tax. We don't have any taxing set up here. Otherwise, this would populate based on um, the... Um, a tax rule down here. Um, so you can see it's validated. That means it's posted. Our tax rule is no tax. And it's authorized to pay because it's already posted. We can select dimensions to, to post to. Uh, and then the nitty gritty here is, is the lines. So this invoice was for $100. We have three lines, one to, to each financial site. We choose the expense account we want to go with. And again, this is not used for products. This is only for miscellaneous type items. Uh, there is no intercompany invoicing for products. So, um, again, if we had chosen these invoice elements, they would have populated here. You can put a quantity and comments in if you want as to what these line items are. They could be, you know, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. And, um, that's really about it. <clears throat> then you create the document, then you'll have open items, and, and as you'll see, um, we're expecting a $100 check, so just one payment, and that's going to be to corporate. So if I go to receive a payment, I would select corporate as the company, or excuse me, as the site, and then this would show available to pay. Now when I post this, <clears throat> the X3 is going to automatically handle the journal entry, because if I make a payment to corporate, all the other sites are going to owe corporate. So in the end, this is what my journal entry looks like. So I clear out the AP amount for 100. I expense the $100 amongst the three different sites, Dallas, Austin, and CDC. And then here, here are my intercompany entries uh, to my intercompany account saying that this site owes corporate, this site owes corporate, and this site owes corporate $100. And that's how intercompany purchase invoicing works in X3.